welcome to part two, looking at the small and minor parties. So, uh, we're going to look at the Green Party to begin with. Okay, this party was actually formed in Coventry in 1972. It was originally called the People Party, then became an Ecological Party, uh, and eventually became the Green Party. Their main interest and concern was about environmental issues. They actually did reasonably quite. They actually did reasonably well in terms of the popular vote in the European elections of the late 1980s, which actually prompted Mrs. Thatcher to make a speech about green issues. Um, during the 1990s, though, they really had a big falling out amongst themselves. They did really badly in the 1990s, but they've really kind of come back in the year 2000s. Um, they did quite well in the European elections because they they adopted a proportional electoral system for electing representatives. So the Greens actually managed to win um, a couple of Green MEPs, including future leader Caroline Lucas. Uh, they did win, so as I said before, they did win a couple of seats in the European elections. But again, they haven't done very well in Scotland or in Wales on their various assemblies. Which really differs, by the way, to the Greens of Germany. Uh, they've done quite well, especially at a regional level in that particular country. But the same hasn't replicated itself in the UK. In 2010, the Greens won their first parliamentary seat of, in Westminster, which is Brighton. Uh, and it was done by their leader, Caroline Lucas, and she's actually kept this seat ever since. She still is the Green MP for Brighton. There she is. She's quite a charismatic kind of leader. She's quite. She's often on the TV, on the radio, a little bit less these days. Uh, but again, she's quite a good speaker. And I'm not saying she's like Nigel Farage or Alex Salmond, but again, it's this kind of a, a popular, kind of good speaking kind of leader um, I would say it's been large parts of their kind of rejuvenation of the Green Party. The Greens are allowed to do things a bit differently, so they currently have two leaders. Um, they seem to almost job share the role. Uh, this is done deliberately, because uh, they like to show themselves being that little bit different, I think. In the 2015 general election, they did win one million votes. Um, I'm not sure how many they received in 2019, so it's worth having a quick look to see what their number of votes were in 2019 um, and as of this time last year they have 165 councillors across the country um, this is out of 19,000 in total so it's not a huge number and as I said before they control just one council which again is Brighton so I suppose you could say they're quite influential in Brighton I suppose right some of their key ideas and policies uh, they're very pro-European they do want to cut or have net carbon emissions in the UK to be zero by 2030. Again, not massively dissimilar to Labour's position, if you remember, where they wanted it zero by the 2030s. And they want to spend £100 billion a year to tackle climate change in the UK. They want to introduce a carbon tax, which would enable £86 billion a year to be spent on universal income to replace the tax and benefit system. They want a quota of 40% of females to be on major company boards, 100,000 council houses, increased funding on education, and free dentistry and prescriptions, and an increase of NHS funding by £6 billion. So you see how they're quite left of centre. Again, some of these policies are not dissimilar to Jeremy Corbyn's Labour. For example, uh, NHS funding, well, I think he was £4 billion, pounds, wasn't he? Uh, which again is in the same area, this thing about 100,000 council houses, again, Labour's policy was something very similar to that. Um, cutting carbon emissions, being pro-European, again quite similar to Labour. And you see how a lot of these things are very anti the Thatcher agenda. So talking about carbon tax, for example, uh, talking about building council houses, um, etc, etc. So... What I'd like to do uh, is the next piece of work on this. If you give me a moment, I'll just bring up the booklet. So the next bit I'd like to do then in your booklet is here. Uh, it's the major policies of SNP Green, UKIP, Strash, Brexit. Again, the PowerPoint slides we've done have mentioned quite a few of these. So you should be able to get quite a lot of these points just from the PowerPoint we've just done. Um, again, like you did for the Labour Party and the Liberal Party, look on the BBC website and it'll have on the policies of these three parties. It'll have Brexit, not UKIP, which is fine. 
Uh, and again, just jot down some of the major policies of these three parties on these particular areas or issues. Once you've done that, I think the type of exam question you're going to get on these parties might be about their influence. You know, how influential are these small minor parties? Um, you might get a question like, if I the view that the only parties that matter in Britain are Labour, Conservative and Liberal Democrat, or evaluate the view that the minor parties are no longer important in Britain, you, you know, that type of question. So what I've done on this table, I've basically, on the left-hand side, I've just got down the functions of a political party. Uh, so you've got representation, participation, recruitment, policy ideas, and on to the side, providing government. So in what ways is the SNP influential regarding representation? So, for example, you might say, well, they're really influential because they run the government of Scotland, they have a majority of seats in Scotland, the third largest number of seats at Westminster. The Greens, not that influential. They've got one MP uh, in Brighton. UKIP stroke Brexit. Well, in the past, they've done quite well in those European elections, haven't they? So that's some stuff there. Participation, I think I might read this as membership size. I think that's going to be the easiest one. So again, we've already mentioned about the SNP and membership size. Uh, do the Greens have lots of members? Does UKIP show Brexit part of lots of members? Find out. I think this third line, actually, I should have taken this out of this table. Recruitment of politicians, it's, well, that's what parties do, isn't it? I suppose they've all had leads. I'd ignore that one. I don't know how you can really fill that in, to be honest with you. Policy ideas, this is kind of how influential have these parties been in terms of their ideas? Have they had an influence on governments or major political parties? So like we said before, you could say UKIP in particular on this one, because obviously Brexit and then that was taken up, wasn't it? And then providing governments as well. Have any of these parties actually provided governments at any level within the UK? And then under this, again, perhaps I should really have got rid of these by now. Um, obviously, I've not changed since last year. But Theresa May had, I put here an unofficial coalition. It was actually called a supply and motion agreement. But she had to deal with another small party. Find out what that party was. It was the DUP. But find out what was the background of the DUP. What were the DUP's views? And then final bit, it's just like a conclusion, really. How influential do you think these minor parties are in the UK? Okay, once you've done that, there's a Politics Review article in the latest edition. I'll put, it, I'll put a link to it on uh, an email. Um, I'll do some questions based on that as well. But hopefully from doing all this, you should be able to have some idea about the ideas of small parties and then be able to think about and possibly do exam questions about how much influence these small parties have on UK politics and the political system.